Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dwarven Tavern. <clears throat> I am and will continue to be Dr. Jeff Goins, your host for this review. And uh, this time um, we've gotten a, a, a number of uh, Mutants and Mastermind books from uh, the, the wonderful folks at uh, Green Ronin. And uh, uh, they're, they're, very, they're very nice, very nice folks. Of course, that doesn't guarantee a good book, but uh, uh, I try to judge things on their merits alone and not, uh, you know, not, oh, he's a nice guy. It must be neat. Well, it's, it's I don't know. I don't know if it's more likely or not. I, I really don't know what the statistics are, if any. Uh, however, uh, Chris is a nice guy. I, I love talking to him at the cons, and uh, he's uh, <coughs> sent me these, uh, these books to review. I, uh, it, it's taken a while for me to get to them because, uh, you know, we were in New Mexico and all that stuff and, uh, fighting COVID. Dr. Lisa was, uh, she was, uh, fighting COVID and as you may or may not know, uh, but anyway, we're back and I'm trying to get caught up, uh, on my promises. And, uh, this time we are going to do, we're going to take a look at the Rogues Gallery, uh, Mutants of Mastermind third edition book for $34.99, five. Thirty-four ninety-five. I wish they would make up their minds. I'm not just talking about mutants and masterminds. I'm not talking about Green Room. I'm talking about everybody who prices things. Uh, Thirty-four ninety-nine. Thirty-four ninety-five. Five or nine. What's a four cents difference? I guess when you're selling billions of books, it does make a difference. But it thirty-four ninety-five. Anyway, so uh, the Rogues Gallery is a uh, one of the things, it, it's, it's an accessory uh, for the Mutants of Masterminds game. And uh, one thing that I uh, dearly, dearly adore is having samples of things. Uh, the, um, the, the constant need for new NPCs or new creatures is, is you know, they, we have tons of uh, monster manuals, right? Bestiaries. But in a game like this, um, in a game like this, we need lots and lots of NPCs, heroes, villains, etc. Because, uh, as you may know, uh, just I think just about uh, every just about every uh, game, forgot where I was going with that, but I got, I got uh, caught up in uh, a villain called Mercurial. So um, every game is kept fresh by having uh, lots and lots of encounters. Encounters is what, one of the things that make the flavor better. It's like cooking with real butter versus margarine, you know, when you have uh, Kerry Gold. <laughs> With superhero games specifically, you don't necessarily have to fight a lot of monsters, though the occasional kaiju is uh, is a thing. Um, but you don't normally see like monsters, like the Aboleth or the uh, I don't know Devastation Beetle. Although although we did have a game, uh, we ran a campaign in uh, Silver Age Sentinels in which the heroes fought a devastation beetle that woke up beneath a city and uh, was getting ready to devastation all over it. And uh, the heroes had to face it, which they had a tough time. So it, I'm not saying it can't be done, but <clears throat> superhero games are all about personalities, uh, in my opinion. And when you have a wonderful selection of books and uh, a wonderful selection of uh, new uh, personalities to put into the game, it beats up flavor, and that's what the Rogue's Gallery is. So let's take a look at the book finally, if I could quit talking long enough to talk some about it. We have two sections, which is cool. Uh, from page 5 to page 127 in this book are the solo villains, meaning uh, they're villains that act by themselves, like Catherine the Red and uh, Maestro and Mercurial and... Tesla Girl, which it's a shame she's a villain. That's a neat name. Um, we'll take a look at Tesla Girl and see what she's on about. 
So in this book, they have uh, their their uh, basic description, uh, and uh, here on page one twenty, as you see here, uh, it shows their personality, uh, their powers and abilities. Uh, a brief description at first. Well, it's like three paragraphs. So, and it tells a little bit about the background. Freya Mar Mercedes' parents. Fre okay, let's let's start this where I can read. Freya Mercedes' parents were drawn together by shared careers. Utre researches researchers. Uh, okay, I'll pretend I can read. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. For the high tech weapons cartel known as the Ghost Works. See Emerald City, which is another review that I'm doing. Uh, chapter eleven. Ghost Works. They raised child genius Freya to follow in their footsteps, but tragically, she would take those steps alone after a lab accident made her an orphan. Those pesky lab accidents. Left to her own devices, eight-year-old Freya resolved to attain the greatness for her parents, uh, the greatness her parents intended, armed with her admiration for Nikola Tesla. Don't we all? admire Nikola Tesla, and her rudimentary Victorian era mad science training. She constructed an array of amazing retro technological wonders powered by steam, lightning, and clockwork. So she's totally a steampunk villain, and she's unfortunately very evil. Um, I don't know, because they don't really deal with uh, alignment in, uh, in this, uh, but, you know, there's good and bad, and she sounds like somebody that I think would be really cool to, to uh, turn into a good guy. Just because of my love and admiration for Nikola Tesla, I guess, I don't know, but uh, some things, I don't know. And uh, then here on uh, page 121, it has, and for all of the villains therein, <clears throat> it has the, uh, the, the stats for each person. Starting with their powers, uh, like for for uh, Tesla girl, she's got uh, Clockwork Sharks. Although it seems like Clockwork uh, uh, Crocodiles would be better. It would put a real hook in it. <laughs> no, uh, dimensionally vexed. She has shrinking four. Must be part of the lab accident, huh? Uh, gadgets uh, array. She has a flight harness, mesmerizing pocket watch, a Tesla gun, and a voltaic gun. Uh, uh, Phlogiston field, sustained protection six. It's removable. And uh, she has x ray goggles. So that's that. And then it has a, her equipment, her skills, her advantages, her offense, defense. Etc. Etc. And it does so for each individual um, being villain in this book. Okay. So then, beginning on page, uh, well, just just also another thing to mention is that uh, it <clears throat> it is written well. Uh, judging this with my magical bachelor's degree in writing in English, and my master's degree in education or PhD. Sorry, um, it is uh, it is very well written. It is very clear and concise. I like the uh, the pages are not very uh, they're not overly glossy. They're kind of a semi gloss, which I love and appreciate. So uh, the the pages aren't a high gloss, which makes me happy. It's easier on the eyes. It is uh, it's clear uh, and concise. Each holy crap. Uh, each villain entry has uh, has their own two pages. <laughs> Selfie. Red teeth, Sven. The Osprey. Pandemic. Uh, he's out and about this this time of year. So they have. Uh, I mean, it's it's like uh, I, I can't really count them, but it's quite a few. I wonder if it says on the back. Uh, over 150. So you've got under 150, over 150 villains to uh, to uh, throw at your, I mean, maybe even literally throw at your players 
and uh, each one is detailed and it's and it's clear and concise and well presented each one has their own illustration and so forth then uh, beginning on page 129 we have villain teams and groups so uh, we have the candy crew uh, the devil's advocates the eclipse syndicate the factor four <laughs> which reminds me of the tick and civic civil civil civic minded four four-legged man <laughs> feral boy <laughs> oh my goodness carpeted man jungle janet so you've got uh the factor four uh hocus pocus the house of usher Johnny Frostbite and Ice Princess, uh, Purple Haze and Scarlet Mist, The Sportsman and Princess Poison, and Star Blights. Uh, each one of those groups is, uh, it's not only does it talk about the group, but it also talks about uh, each, each member of said group, uh, like the Candy Czar and Choco Nut Golem, my God, Gobstopper. Her name is Amber Gum. <laughs> oh my goodness! You know it gives a, it gives a little bit of a, a, a description of the uh, the group and how they got together, and a couple of hooks when the door is ajar. It's when it is not a door. Uh, heroes get word the Candy Crew has recently robbed museums, rare bookstores, and curio shops, taking only odd, not particularly valuable items. So what is going on? And they got to figure that out. Uh, then you got the Devil's Advocates, which is a super villain biker gang, the Eclipse Syndicate, and so forth. Each one with their own heroes, my villains. Yeah. I mean, I think these guys are cool, so I don't know why I keep referring to them as villains or heroes. Villains. I, I want to call them heroes, but they're not. They're villains. The Sportsman and Princess Poison and so forth. So this is a very, very nice collection of, uh, of villains to put in your, uh, in your campaign if you're using the... Uh, the Freedom City or Emerald City, as it already referred to in this book, uh, or in your own your own house rules homebrew world, or on Earth or whatever. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, that part that part's up to you. Uh, so uh, this book goes for thirty four ninety five, and uh, you can find it at uh, mutantsandmastermind dot com or greenronan dot com, and. Uh, I, I think it's uh, it's a fairly I mean I'm going to give it five axes because I think it's a fairly necessary uh, addition to a uh, wide ranging and diverse uh, game for your uh, for your players. I mean uh, it's so easy to run out of uh, bad guys in certain circumstances, especially if your heroes are, are exceptionally good or very zealous or you play a lot or whatever. It's uh, you know, you never run out of orcs, uh, yeah, but the uh, the supervillains are is something that you can blow through in an afternoon if you don't do it right. <laughs> and once once that's done, you got to make your own. This keeps you from having to make your own. So uh, very very good very good book, uh, very well very well done. And uh, I'm going to give it five axes again. Uh, that does not make ten. They do not stack. But five axes is pretty pretty darn good. And uh, this, again, this is uh, Mutants of Mastermind, third edition, uh, Rogues Gallery. And uh, look them up. Look into this book, because I think if you've got a collection of uh, Mutants of Mastermind's book, this this is the one. Or this is one of them that, that need to happen. So there we have it. Uh, and uh, so on, uh, on that happy note, uh, I am Dr. Jeff Goins, your host, and on behalf of that entire cast and crew of the... Dwarven Tavern. We wish for you to want for nothing but adventure, and at first I feared it, then I flew into battle. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.